What's up, BookTube? I know, been away a while. Uh, my outdoor activities is taking me away and taking its toll physically. But uh, I'm back and I managed to uh, read one book while I was on my hiatus. And that was Meat by... Dane Cobain, who is also one of my booktube friends. Uh, I was looking forward to this book. I've uh, actually been looking forward to it for a couple years. Uh, first, I thought it was going to be nonfiction, you know, because Dane is a vegan, but uh, I'm actually glad it wasn't nonfiction because uh, this book is off the hook. Uh, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, first off, a couple things. I want to show you where I was at when I read most of this, which is um, pretty cool uh, and a bit ironic. So uh, I'll show you that. Okay, I'm hoping y'all can see Dane's book there through the windshield of this old Jeep of mine. I'm recording this because... Uh, it's a bit ironic where I've been reading a lot of this book at. Um, there's an excavator. Uh, they took a pond out back in here in the middle of nowhere, but back here in the middle of nowhere is a cow pasture. And as you can see, right over there are some cattle. There's an old barn. This is all reclaimed strip mine land, and uh, people have turned it into grazing land. So I figured I would get this on tape uh, so I could throw it up when I uh, did a book review. Because uh, if you read the book, uh, this will make sense to you. Okay. It's chilly out here. Sorry about the camera zoom in there. Yeah, I've been up here uh, guarding this equipment for, uh, well, last night made three, three nights. Like anybody's going to come out here and bother it in the middle of nowhere, but these uh, companies want a uh, little security, if you can call it that. Anyway, i got to get back in the Jeep. It's uh, cold. All right, so glad you enjoyed that view of the cow pasture there, and wanted to show you the newest addition to our family. Uh, this is Guffins, um, part Pomeranian and Pekingese. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people know I'm a hunter and trapper and all that, but I still love animals. And you know, people have to understand that that doesn't make you or anything but uh, and that's no reflection on Dane's novel because uh, he he put a bunch of stuff in the appendix and some other places but anyway from cover to cover it's awesome and hang on we'll get into the review review here in a minute All right. let me put Guffins down and let it go about its business okay I got rid of the beast there <laughs> getting rid of it I mean I let it go on into the other part of the house there to uh, chew on whatever it's gonna chew on oh cheers my friends okay getting back into the book uh, just wow I you know This should be Dane's breakthrough novel. This, this this should be on the bestseller list. I kid you not. I have read a lot of horror novels, and he was in the zone on this. And as a writer, you know when everything's clicking. And if he didn't give himself a pat on the back after this one, then I, yeah, if I ever see him, I'll, I'll give him a pat on the back. But uh, great characters. Great setting, I mean, uh, you know, factory farming, it, it really is what it is. It's, it's not nice. Um, it's, it's cruel. 
there is a population to feed. Um, that's one of the many reasons why I try to get a lot of my food from out here where I live. And the cow pasture that you've seen, uh, a lot of those are just families on them. And they basically lease the land and the cattle are pretty much free to roam. Some of them are fenced in, but they take really good care of them. Well, most of the owners take really good care of them. And they might, like, maybe butcher one a year, two a year, whatever it is. Uh, so there's no mass, anything like that. But uh, getting back to this, uh, two of my favorite characters, obviously Big Jim. Dude's a brawler. He's, a, you know, he's in charge of security. And then, you know, Tom Copeland, you know, the vet, Naren. Uh, there was a couple other characters I liked. Um, I don't do spoilers, but... You know, it's a good idea not to get too attached <laughs> to some of the people in this. As far as, uh, man, post-apocalyptic books... I mean, this is right up there, and I am not kidding. Uh, like I said, you know, it's really, it's really hard for me to put into words. I'm, I'm not that great at reviewing books, but uh, you know, once this gets going, and it don't take it long, it just, you know, there's always something going on, which there should be, you know in a survival situation. There's no time to kick back and go, you know, okay, we we made it this far, now we can, you know, rest on our laurels. Yeah, none of that in this book here. Really, really enjoyed it. Dane, I'm proud of you, dude. Uh, like I said, this this should be your breakthrough novel. If if you don't if you don't go mainstream, uh, then honestly I, I don't know if there's any hope for the rest of us indie authors. But uh, yeah, five stars on this one. Everybody go out pick this up if you enjoy horror fiction because it is well worth it. Um, I was trying to think of something to compare it to, uh, and you know. This is probably considered high praise, but I don't care. This is this is a great book. Um, Swan Song um, by Robert R. McCammon. Um, the Stand by Stephen King. And I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. I mean, if you really want to get into some post-apocalyptic stuff. But this one's unique because of the way it starts out. Uh, Ground Zero being a, a slaughterhouse so hope y'all enjoyed that Dane good job dude um, really I hope you write a sequel I mean I don't know how you can outdo that but you know that's always the challenge uh, cheers my friends uh, thanks to everyone for watching I'll try to be back a little bit uh, sooner been this last time but uh, I had to do a review on this book it's freaking off the hook so uh, drink one for me don't forget to give this video one finger up or one thumb up whichever you prefer take care out there my friends thanks for watching later bye